This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So now we are going to start a next chapter. The name of the chapter is electrostatic potential and capacitance. So in this chapter we are going to study about electrostatic potential as well as the various capacitance. Here we are going to study introductory part electrostatic potential, potential due to a point charge, potential due to an electric dipole, potential due to a system of charges, equipotential surfaces, potential energy of a system of charges, Potential energy in an external field, electrostatics of conductors, dielectrics and polarization, capacitors and capacitors, capacitors and capacitors, the parallel plate capacitor, effect of dielectric on capacitors, combination of capacitors. Energy stored in a capacitor, Van de Graaff generator. So we are going to study about all these things in this particular chapter. Okay. So moving to the first part that is introductory part. See in the previous chapters we have already studied the notion of potential energy. Isn't it? That is... Uh, when an external force does not work in taking a body from a point to another against a force like a spring force or gravitational force, that work gets stored as potential energy of the body. The force, if, the, if it is not taking a part in bringing the body from one point to the another point, then that energy is stored in the form of potential energy that we studied and when the external force is removed the body moves gaining kinetic energy and losing an equal amount of potential energy and uh, thus the kinetic as well as potential energy is conserved so these kinds of forces we call them as conservative force okay and we can give the example of spring force as well as gravitational force. So these are the examples of conservative forces. Okay. See Coulomb force between two charges is like the gravitational force. Isn't it? We already studied that. That is also a conservative force. Because in that particular law, both the, it, there is an inward square dependence on distance and differ mainly in the proportionality constants, the masses in the gravitational law are replaced by charges in case of Coulomb's law. Isn't it? In gravitational law, it is m1 m2 by r square. In uh, Coulomb's law, it is q1 q2 by r square. The masses are replaced by charges. So, like the potential energy of a mass in a gravitational field, we can define electrostatic potential energy of a charge in an electrostatic field. Isn't it? So, now let us define the electrostatic potential energy in an electrostatic field. You just consider an electrostatic field E due to some charge configuration. So now for simplicity you consider the field E due to charge Q which is placed at origin. So you can see in this particular figure. So the charge Q is placed at origin and field is created due to that charge Q. And now you just imagine we bring a test charge Q. Okay. From a point R to a point 
P against the repulsive force on it due to the charge Q. So now this charge Q is having electric field around it. But in, in that case, we are bringing this charge Q against this field from point R to point P. Okay. And with reference to this figure, this will happen if Q and Q are both positive or both negative. So let us take both Q and Q as positive. Both will be greater than 0. So, so here first we assume that this test charge Q is so small that it does not disturb the original configuration. Namely the charge Q at the origin. And second, in bringing this uh, charge Q from R to P, we apply external force. So we apply external force that is F external, okay, just enough to counter the repulsive electric force F field. As I told you, that is moving against the electric field which is created by this charge Q. So in order to balance that, we are applying external field in order to bring this charge Q from R to P. So we can write F external is opposite to the electric field. This means there is no net force or acceleration of the charge Q when it is brought from R to P. That is it is brought with infinitely small slow constant speed. So in this case work done by the external force is the negative of the work done by the electric force and it gets fully stored in the form of potential energy of the charge Q. So if that external force is removed on replacing or on reaching this point P, that electric force will take the charge away. Okay, from Q. If you remove that external force when it reaches this point P, then that electric force, it will take away this charge Q. And the stored energy at point P is used to provide kinetic energy to the charge Q in such a way that the sum of the kinetic as well as potential energy is conserved. So work done in bringing the charge Q from point R to point P is given by, we can write it as W R P is equal to R P F external and which is also equal to negative of And this work done is against electrostatic repulsive force and it is stored as potential energy. Okay. At every point in electric field, a particle with charge Q possesses a certain electrostatic potential energy, isn't it? And this work done increases its potential energy by an amount which is equal to potential energy difference between R and P. So we can write the potential energy difference between R and P as delta U is equal to so that is given by U P minus U R we can write it as W P R okay 
so we can define electric potential energy difference between two points here in this case between point p and r okay we are defining it so it can be defined as the work required to be done by an external force in moving charge q from one point to another for electric field of any orbitary charge configuration okay so here we should consider some of the important points so in this particular equation the right side of this equation it depends only on the initial and final positions of the charge up minus ur isn't it it means that the work done by an electrostatic field in moving a charge from one point to another it depends only on initial and final points and it is independent of the path which is taken to go from one point to the another so this is the fundamental characteristic of a conservative force okay and even this uh, concept of potential energy would not be meaningful if the work is depending on the path it, it is depending only on the initial and final positions the path independence of work done by an electrostatic field can be proved using coulomb's law and this equation it defines pot potential energy difference in terms of physically meaningful quantity called work okay it is the actual value of potential energy is not physically significant it is only the difference between yeah the energy difference between two points we can always add an arbitrary constant alpha to a potential energy at every point since this will not change the potential energy difference okay so we can add alpha it will not change the potential energy difference that is up plus alpha minus u r plus alpha that is equal to u p minus u r so put it differently there is a freedom in choosing the point where potential energy is zero so a very convenient choice to have electrostatic potential energy zero is at infinity so with this choice if we take the point r at infinity then what we we'll get from equation is so if you take out the point to infinity then the equation becomes w infinity p is equal to u p minus u infinity which is and we are choosing at infinity the potential energy will be zero that is equal to u p okay since the point p is arbitrary so this equation provides us with the definition of potential energy of a charge q at any point okay the potential energy of charge q at a point in presence of field due to any other charge configuration is the work done by the external force which is equal and opposite to the electric force in bringing the charge q from infinity to that point if you are considering point p here then potential energy of charge q is nothing but bringing this point q from infinity to the point under consideration 
So the work done in bringing the point from infinity to the point under consideration is called as potential energy. Okay, and uh, if we call, if we say electric potential difference, then that is the work done in bringing the point from po you know, from point R to point P, or you can say from one point to the other point that is the potential energy difference and this is the electrostatic potential energy you no know, potential energy of a charge bringing the point from infinity to the point under consideration okay